If the EMR begins to exhibit strange errors, try a soft reset, which is essentially what happens when the MR is powered on. Hold save while pressing exit to initiate a soft reset of the MR rack, and there's no fear here as the internal memory isn't wiped out. If weirdness continues, reinitialize by holding save and pressing enter. Pressing exit next cancels this function, but pressing enter completes reinitialization. This wipes system settings and RAM contents, so back up the MR rack before proceeding. The screen lets you know the procedure is underway and then returns you to the default display when it's finished. Let's look at the front panel. There's a headphone jack and volume control knob. This volume control knob controls both the headphone level and the audio output level of the rear jacks. A preview of the sound displayed on screen can be heard by tapping the audition button. Nice. Navigation is pretty straightforward. There is a parameter knob on the left side of the screen and a value knob on the right side. Select a performance to work within by first pressing the performance button and then rotate the parameter knob to browse through the categories. GM for general MIDI. There's ROM for the presets and all perf for an alphabetical listing of all available performances the MR has access to currently. These are all starting points to create your own performance. Any of them can be edited and saved into a RAM slot. Since this MR was just reinitialized, there is no RAM performance category yet established. In the ROM category, the performance named Play Sounds is essentially a zeroed out template. Pressing the Sound button gives access to the parts that are in the chosen performance. Here, each numbered part corresponds to MIDI channels 1 through 16. For instance, part 8 is on channel 8, Part 10 is on channel 10, and part 14 is on channel 14. The Play Sounds performance is a good place to start. Oh yeah! The parameter knob, also known as the Sound Type Selector, chooses the sound category. The value knob, aka Sound Name Selector, chooses a specific sound. Yeah. Let's choose a different sound for this part. Not bad, but let's try one more. Oh, that's definitely the most annoying. We'll go with that one. Notice that pressing the performance button now indicates that play sounds has been edited. Choosing a different performance now will nullify any changes made. To keep changes, press save. Press enter to proceed. And to rename the performance, use the parameter knob to select the character position and the value knob to choose the character. We're going to make this simple. I'm not going to spell out something completely different. I'm just going to change the name to test sounds. Names all set. Press enter. Use the value knob to select an open RAM performance slot. There are 32 RAM slots currently all labeled as empty since the MR was just reinitialized. I'll choose triple zero. Press enter to confirm test sounds has been placed in RAM performance slot triple zero. Press the sound button to go back to changing up which sounds are assigned to which parts. I like that one better. I'm going to go back to part one. The sound type knob will easily find all the bass sounds on the MR. There's got to be a fretless bass somewhere. There it is. Parts you don't want to use in a performance can be muted. Be quiet, part two. Part three needs a sweet electric piano sound. That's good for my imaginary song. We'll mute part four and we'll mute part five. But part six, we're going to find a guitar. Mm -hmm. 
not bad, but let's see if there's maybe a, a 12 string, something a little bit more. On to part seven. Warm bath from the string section is a favorite of MR owners. Part eight gets muted, part nine gets muted. Uh, 10 has the custom drum kit. Part 11 gets muted. Let's see about part 12. Huh, a pan flute. Not enough of those in synths from the 90s. What's next? Let's go back to 13. 13 should have something exotic sounding. Almost Shankar. What was on part 14 again? I need something slightly more annoying. Yeah, that'll do it. How about part 15? I dig that. I don't know why, but I dig it. And my imaginary song should have some sort of organ on part 16. Oh yeah, we're going to stick with that. So with all parts assigned a sound, and in some cases, specific parts muted to exclude them from responding to their associated MIDI channel, these changes can be solidified by updating a performance with a simple save. Frankly, I edited more than enough bits and pieces here in this demo that it would have been more sensible to save nearly every step of the way instead of waiting until now. These synthesizers, after all, are music computers, and like all computer data, if you don't save changes to your work as you go, frustration and regret are just around the corner. That said, I'll press save, then enter to initiate saving the performance, and enter again to override the protections, and enter to bypass renaming. If needed, I could take this updated version of my test sounds performance and save it to another RAM slot, but of course I'm not gonna do that, so I'll just leave it where it is, and I'll press enter to confirm. Now let's explore a few parameter options that can be saved with sounds in their part. MIDI channel, volume, panning, some envelopes, and effects routing, among others, can be altered. I'll mess with part three, which was, uh... Press the params button. The parameter knob selects the option to alter. I'll mess with the effects bus for this real thing piano. Here, the value knob selects the specific routing for the sound. Choosing the dry bus, unsurprisingly, puts no effect on this real thing piano part. Now with a wet reverb effect. Or I can choose a chorus. Subtle and tasteful. Press params again to begin at the top of the parameter menu. There's also pitch bend, micro tuning and pitch tables, glide options, LFO adjustments, amp and filter envelope parameters, velocity curves, key and velocity range settings, aftertouch capabilities, and controller responses along with other parameters to be tweaked per part and separate from global system settings. This is incredibly flexible since sounds themselves are never changed. Those parameters are linked to the part. You can stay in the parameters menu and switch parts, which is extremely convenient for quickly changing the same parameter across many parts. Knowing that, changing the effects busing to different parts doesn't require endless menu diving. Insonic designed an excellent user interface. It's very logical. Two encoder knobs do nearly all the navigating while buttons bring up menus or execute commands.
Press the Effects button, and then press Enter to edit insert effects. And use the value knob to select a new insert effect. How about Reverb Chorus? Let's hear it. I'll use the value knob to select something else. Made some changes to this performance, so let's go ahead and save it. And we're going to save it to exactly the same place we have been. Test sounds, triple zero. Let's head over to part 10 to customize the drum kit on this performance. Percussion and standard sounds can be assigned to trigger from individual keys in the custom kit. Press the sound button and navigate up to part 10. MIDI channel 10 is frequently used for drums and percussion, but you can certainly customize the channel however you like. I'll keep this where it is. Press the params button and I'll navigate to the parameter allowing me to choose which key triggers specific drum sounds. Off camera, I have a master controller to trigger keys I want assigned to different sounds, reflected here on the display. Rather than percussion name, you can view the list based on where the sound is stored. Either way, notes D3, C3, B2, A2, G2, and F2 currently trigger dry tom 1 at triple zero in drum bank 13. I'll change the snare in a moment. I'll press the same key on the keyboard and use the value knob to change the drum sound to one I like. I'm liking that old Simmons electronic tom. So now I'll set the other key notes to 027 in drum bank 13. Notice the pitch changes because of the key note but still it's the same drum sound. Yeah, the 80s were pretty fantastic. Switching to view the sound name, I can see Synth Tom 4 has been chosen for D, C, B, A, G, and F. The volume level with equal pressure is uneven, and I'll correct that in a moment. First, I'll change the snare here on D2. I like the gated pop snare sound. Now I'll change the kick on C2. Something low and throaty. Yeah. That blends nicely. The output level per key can also be adjusted, so I'm going to do that here to level out the toms specifically, but make sure that everything matches in output level.
I'm going to quickly mute all parts in this performance so I can play a short drum sequence that belongs to a larger musical piece. I'm going to head back now to the effects bus parameter for part 10. Each note triggered in a drum kit can have its own effects bus assignment. I'd like to add the wettest reverb to the toms and the gated snare, but keep the kick dry. So let's play with that. I'll play the drum sequence one more time and add a snare part towards the end. A long reverb tail is what I'm looking for here on this drum sequence, but just for the toms and for the snare. Mission accomplished. That's just a few of the tweaks that can be made when creating custom drum kits. But remember, if you don't save the performance at this point, those drum kit changes will be lost when going on to do something else. So that's a relatively quick primer on navigating the Insonic MR rack. I'd say it's the most intuitive synth I've owned. True, you can't edit down to the wave sample level without Mac or PC software, but it was designed that way, and for its display size, it makes sense. Additional wave samples and sounds can be installed in three expansion slots internally. There are four EXP wave boards to choose from, World, Drums, Dance, and Perfect Piano. Also, a data card slot on the front will accept the one and only Insonic ROM card ever made for the MR rack, the MRC1 SynthBank card. Good news though, you don't have to pay a ridiculous price on eBay for it. You can find the SysX files floating around the internet. Bad news? Well, you can't load all 180 sounds from the card into the MR rack at one time. There just isn't enough space and RAM to hold all of them simultaneously. And by the way, that data card slot also receives SRAM PCM CIA cards up to 2 megabytes for saving your own sounds and performances. One other outstanding feature the MR Rack offers is called Stacks, which allows easy layering and keyboard splits of multiple parts on the same MIDI channel without worry that a careless program change may reset those multiple unique sounds to just one patch. This is a clever sanity saver for musicians who create their own lush layers and board splits for gigs and studio sessions. In 1996, the MR rack was about $1,400 US, but when you can find them used, they go for about one-third that price in 2020. Totally worth it. <laughs>